Contrary to popular belief, the atria are just as important as the ventricles of the heart. So in this video, we'll be discussing the left and the right atrium of the heart, their functions, and their features. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get started. The atria, as you can see in this diagram here on the right, sits right above the ventricles. And might I add, atria is the plural version of atrium. So when we say atria, just know that we're talking about both the left and the right atrium. The atria are the superior chambers of the heart, and both the left and the right atrium are slightly different from one another in appearance and in function. They are separated by a thin wall called the interatrial septum. Inter as in intervene, atrial as in atria. The atria are often referred to as entry halls, and the reason why is because all blood that is just entering the heart enters through the atria. So let's discuss the difference between the right and the left atrium, then dive into their features. So let's start with the right atrium. The right atrium is larger in size and thinner in muscle. The right atrium has anterior walls that have a rigid surface. Now, as we said earlier, all blood that is just returning to the heart has to first enter the atria. Blood that just entered the right atrium is deoxygenated. This is because this blood has just delivered all of its oxygen throughout the body and is now returning to the heart to get sent to the lungs for more oxygen. The right atrium will receive this deoxygenated blood from three places, the supraria vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. The superior vena cava returns blood to the heart that has just delivered oxygen to the areas in the body such as the head, chest, and neck. The inferior vena cava, this vein returns blood to the right atrium that just delivered oxygen to structures below the diaphragm, such as the legs and the feet. And the coronary sinus returns deoxygenated blood to the right atrium that just supplied oxygen to the heart itself. After the right atrium receives the deoxygenated blood from these three veins, it will then pump the blood to the next chamber, which is going to be the right ventricle in this case. The right ventricle will then pump the blood out through the pulmonary trunk to the lungs to get oxygenated. The left side of the heart in general is thicker than the right side of the heart. The reason being is because the left side of the heart is a part of the cardiovascular systemic circulation, meaning that the left side of the heart functions to push blood out to the rest of the body. Not only does this require more energy, but it definitely requires more muscle. So whenever someone asks you which side of the heart functions to push blood out to the rest of the body, remember that left rhymes with rest in rest of the body. Blood that enters the left atrium just left the lungs, so this blood in the left atrium is going to be oxygenated blood. The left atrium will then pump that oxygenated blood to the next chamber, which in this case would be the left ventricle. The left ventricle will then pump this oxygenated blood through the aorta, and from the aorta, the blood will go out to supply oxygen to the rest of the body. Unlike the right atrium, the walls of the left atrium are very smooth. So let's end this video by discussing the atria's features. There are certain features the atria have that make them even more interesting, such as the fossa ovalis, the pectinate muscles, and the auricles. The fossa ovalis is an indented structure that is found on the surface of the right atrium, and during fetal development, this indentation is actually a hole called the foramen ovale. This hole is what allows blood to flow directly between the right atrium and the left atrium in a fetus. The foramen ovale closes up by birth, leaving the small indentation of the fossa ovalis. The pectinate muscles are named due to its cone-like structure. These muscles are found in the right atrium and it's what gives the right atrium its rigid surface. Auricles are located on the outside of both the left and the right atrium. Auricles are muscular flaps that expand to give the atrium more space to hold blood. And remember we said earlier that the right atrium is larger than the left atrium. So from this I'm sure you can guess that the right auricle is slightly larger than the left auricle. Well that's the end of that. I thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you haven't seen my videos on the ventricles, the AV valves, and the semilunar valves, I'll be sure to list them down below in the description box. Until next time.